Hello, it's Erin. I'm back. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Book Talk. Today we are discussing Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. This book was very good. I know it's been a while since I filmed the book talks. I finished this book like two months ago, back in like the end of June, July. I was reading it during book con and I thought it was very good. This book was highly recommended to me. The booktube, a lot of people liked it. A lot of YouTubers loved it. It got great reviews and I was thinking about reading it, but I wasn't on the fence because of the storyline, which I will get to in a second. But I liked the book a lot. It was very, very good. I loved it so much. The recommendations to booktube. That's where I get all the recommendations, where I find the books that I read. The internet is a good place to find books, people. This book was very, very good. In this book, it's in a five to six book series. It is going to be, I think, six books. Saturday Mass may have announced that there was a six book coming out, I believe, very soon. And Perhaps Storms just came out like, like a year ago because I got it for Christmas. I just started reading the series. Yes, I have all the books. And yes, I have Empire of Storms. Have I read it yet? No, but I will get to it. And yeah, you, you can expect a review on this channel. Now, I review books I really like. I read this book. I liked it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to review it. So that's what I'm going to do now, as I've said previously. This book is very good. It's a high fantasy novel. It's set in renaissance times and it's like renaissance-y kind of reminds me of a little bit of historical fiction mixed with fantasy elements which i thought was weird mending them together and i'm still kind of getting used to the idea of it because in the beginning it was more renaissance-y and more of like historical fiction kind of like than fantasy it reminded me a little bit of the infernal devices where like you got like victorian england and then you got like the shadow hunters it kind of reminds me of that but little bit like it that's why I kind of liked it but it gave me kind of a shatter me kind of vibe which was weird because it didn't take place back then because it's ironic because shatter me takes place in the future but this book gave me a little bit of a shatter me vibe I guess because of the fantasy elements that were being used and the superpowers and the characters reminded me a lot of shatter me and it gave me that kind of vibe and I guess with the romance and the fantasy elements reminded me of Shatter Me. People have not compared it to Shatter Me. That's just me. A lot of people said it's like Game of Thrones or Rain. I have not seen Rain. I've seen a couple episodes of Game of Thrones. I've seen like half the first season. It was really good. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Fighting like the throne and everything. But it kind of reminded me of Shatter Me. I'm not going to lie. It gave me that kind of vibe. Mainly the characters kind of vibe. It's a weird comparison, but that's how I looked at it. But not a lot, just a little bit. If you guys don't know what this book's about, it's an about assassin named Selena. She's 18 years old and she is working for the king. The uh, king has this contest. He wants an assassin for him, like a personal assassin to go out and kill and, and to be a personal killer. He wants people to go kill people for him. He needs a personal assassin. So he has this contest and basically everybody gets like a contestant it's kind of like the hunger games where you have like a tribute and then you like sponsor them it's like the same thing like a sponsor and basically everybody gets somebody and they represent them in this contest and selena was picked by the king's son and she fights in this duel and she becomes the king's assassin and basically she goes out and does his dirty work for him as all I'm gonna say without going into spoilers, that's not much of a spoiler. There's a love triangle in this book. I like love triangles. How did I feel about this love triangle? I liked it. Not as much as Shatter Me's love triangle, but it'll do for now. But I'm still warming up to the love triangle kind of thing, but I already know what team I am. I'll go into that in the next part of this video in the spoiler section. Those of you who read the book, you'll find out. And I think you know who I'm thinking because a lot of us are this team, but not. But Christina's this team because I was watching her I was like, yes. But I am shipping some, some certain characters. I already have my team that I'm going to be shipping. And basically the love triangle was not a spoiler, obviously, because it was on the back of the book. But the love triangle was a very important part of the book. And I didn't see as much romance as I'd like to in this book, but I'm waiting for more romance. I'm actually on the third book, Air of Fire, right now. Shows how behind I've been on book talks. So I will be revealing that in the near future. I've read this book, I've read the second book. The second book was very good. In my opinion so far, I like the first book. The third book's really good. I will go into that in a future review. I don't know when that's gonna happen. You'll just have to see when it happens. Does that make 
sense? I think so. This book was very good. It balanced out the fantasy and the real world elements very well. And I love the cover. This is the new cover, actually. The old cover had like an actress on the front. They recently changed the cover after the first book. Thank God I got this one. I also got the bonus features where I read a bonus scene that Sarah J. Mass had included in this version of the book, which I found really good because it was really fun. And I read an interview and it's an exclusive bonus content. I guess it's like the collector's edition or something in terms of that. I didn't even know what it was when I got it because I got this like years ago. If you watch my one of my book hauls from like two years ago, I've hauled this book. Shows how long I've had it and how much I've wanted to read this series. I wasn't too crazy about reading about assassins. I thought it was kind of like being like kind of morbid, I guess, and I didn't like it. And I thought that I wasn't going to be crazy about it, but BookTube liked it. You know what really sold me? I'm going to be really honest here. Sasha, or was it Christine, said, there's a lot of shirtless guys in there. And I said, that sold me right away. I'm like, shirtless fictional boys? I'm there. I'm being honest here. That's what sold me on the book. I was talking to a girl at BookCon, and you're my subscriber. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, if you're watching, you know. If you remember this conversation we had, <laughs> she's a subscriber of mine. I was talking to her, and uh, I was saying I'm not a big fan of, like, assassins and stuff and then she was wearing cinder and she's like you should read cinder and i was like i'm not a big fan of like cyborgs and cinder by marissa meyer and she's like i wasn't a fan of cyborgs either but the book was really good and that's basically how i felt about this i said i'm not into assassins but the book just drew me in you can't make ex expectations just by reading the, the blurb on the back or on goodreads or wherever you find your information about books I wasn't really a big fan of Assassins, so I didn't think that I was going to like it. I said, I'll read the first book, see what happens. Before I read this book, I got the rest of the book, so I was kind of committed to reading the whole series. And uh, you're not really supposed to do that if you don't like the book. You know, I got the rest of the books before I started reading this. So if I might have didn't like the book, that would have been a real disappointment on my money because I would have spent the money on a series that I wouldn't have liked. So future reference, if you don't know if you're going to like the book series, get the first book, read it, and then get the rest of the series. I'm just glad I bought the whole series, and I knew I was probably going to like it, so I always make a right choice. This always happens. I always buy the first book in a series, even though I didn't read it yet, and I buy the rest of the series along with it, but I make good decisions in terms of buying the series because I liked it, and now I have the rest of the books to read. I'm marathoning it right now. I'm going to be reading up to Queen of Shadows, then I'm going to take a break. Read Empire Storms eventually. I just got to get the other books I have to read. This is not about my TBR. I'm just informing you. So I'm marathoning this series right now, and it is very good. I love it. I'm on the third book. I cannot get enough of this. I love the assassin element. I like the fantasy element. I like her interpretation of fae and fairies and, and everything that goes on in this book. It was very good. So there's not much I can say without giving it away. And this girl, Selena, was from a death camp in Andovia because she was caught at a young age. And there's so much going on in this book. Like I said, I wasn't a big fan of the assassin thing, but it just makes you forget about the fact that you're reading about assassin because the writing is just so good. It's written in third person. We get multiple perspectives in this book, which I liked. We get a little bit of these people and then some characters, and which is why I like about third person. You get more characters. I highly recommend it if you like magical elements, if you like renaissance, if you like assassins killings. I highly, highly recommend it. Even if you like fantasy, even urban fantasy, like the moral instruments or anything like that, highly recommend it. It's very, very good. I think there's a novella series, which I will probably get to. I think it's called Assassin's Blade. I will probably get to it very soon. Maybe not very soon, but we'll see what happens. I want to finish the series and then we'll get to it. I think it's like when she was training. I'm not positive. That's what I got from Christine's review. I'm not positive on that. I will have to look into getting that, but um, very many books that I'm supposed to get. That's all I can say without spoilers, so I don't want to give too much away. So if you haven't read this book, go read it and come back and we'll discuss it. If you have read it, then I'm going to go into spoilers. With that being said, bye non-spoiler people. Bye! Hello non-spoiler people, we are back. You ready to get this review started? I got a lot to say about this book. Like I said, I love this book series. I'm loving it so far. I'm on the third book. And we all know what happens in the third book, don't we? But it was really good. I like it a lot. I'm loving this series. And I'm glad that I dove into it and I read it. And that's all I'm going to say. Let's go into more spoiled details. But yes, I love this book. First, we're going to talk about some characters here that I liked in this book. We're going to start with characters because those are my favorite elements and that's the first element you're really going to talk about. Characters are the mold of the clue of the story. So without characters, you do not have a story. Obviously, follows Selena and Selena's eight years old and she was 
taken by Abernia. This is the thing about this book with all these names. I cannot pronounce these character names. It's like, they're hard to pronounce, like Selena, but you got Dorian and Kale. It's hard to pronounce the king's name. I'm gonna try my best here. We got Parrington that I can pronounce, and then we got Catelyn. I think that's her name. I'm not positive. We'll get to her. Selena was trained by the King of Assassins. She was like his protege, and basically she trained with him. And like the way he treated her as such a child, like I couldn't understand the part where like he found her because after her parents died, they found her in like the water, and I was kind of confused how she got caught and how this stuff happened, but how she ended up in Dovier. I kind of got the gist of it along the way. So, her parents died, Charlie, she became an assassin after the fact, maybe when she was like seven or six. She had no intention of being an assassin. At that age, we don't know what the hell we want with our lives. When I was eight years old, what did I want to do? I don't know. I had a dream of becoming a real estate agent. Why, I don't know. I'm an author now. It's funny how times have changed. So. That probably wasn't her original intention, but she's eight and people probably kind of made the decisions for her to do it. But the guy took her in to be her protege, I guess, and that's what happened. And the King of Assassins, he trained her. He did so many terrible things to this kid in order to train her. Like, such an a-hole. He hangs her from a ledge. He breaks her hand so she can use both her hands. And I'm just like, what is wrong with this guy? Like, is he complete moron or something? Like, I don't know if we're going to see more of him, but he is the reason why Selena is where she is today. You can't blame the guy for showing Selena who she is, because she's this kick-ass protagonist. This gives her toughness. I mean, what would she be if she wasn't an assassin? Who knows? She's a fairy, so he's got that. So she's a fairy and an assassin. Now, I want to know if he knew that she was a fairy before or after or whatever. And she comes from royalty. Does he know? I don't know. I think he just wanted to train her to be his protege. But then in the third book, things happen. We haven't seen him yet. We've only seen him, like, only in, like, kind of, like, flashbacks. We also got Sam, who we kind of follow. And he was her love interest at one point when she was in Dovier. He was an assassin, I think, and then he was killed. And he was a killed too. We don't know much about Sam's death because she won't really talk about it. And when Dorian asks her, she's kind of like iffy about it. She's going to talk about it because it's kind of a touchy subject. But she does mention it here and there. I'd like to see more about Sam and his life. And you know, she was like the first boyfriend that she's had. And the first guy she's ever kissed. And So I like that a lot. Even before Kale's. I like the love triangle. So Selena has dealt with a lot of crap. <laughs> so she's been through so much. She was an assassin from the age of eight. Next character, Dorian. I love Dorian. I have a thing for princes, people. Guys, I love princes. I can't. Like, princes just make me fall in love with them. It's just... <sighs> now, Christina said this in her book talk as well. Dorian's supposed to have dark hair. Beautiful, dark, luscious hair. Now, my head, he's blonde, too. I feel like he's blonde in my head. I don't know why. I think he's hotter that way. You know what? You're entitled to your opinion, but I think Dorian should be blonde in my head. He is. That's how I picture him. I actually picture him the same way I picture Warner, which is from Shadow Me, which is weird. It's, again, why I'm getting kind of a Shadow Me vibe. I think this is becoming a TV series, so it should be interesting how this turns out. I like Dorian. He is my favorite character. I am Team Dorian. Right here, Team Dorian. I have to say it. I love princes. I like the idea of a prince. I think it's sexy and smooth and kind of like, I've been with all these women. I may be a player, but I'm trying to look for my bride. And then he wants Selena. I would be his bride if Selena did it. Let's be honest, we all want to be Dorian's bride. Team Dorian fans, you know what I'm talking about here. I like the idea of the prince. I like princes. I'm a girl. I like princes, okay? Don't judge. I like him. He's smooth. He's sexy. He's attractive. He's... A little arrogant. He's like got some swagger. He's got like all this smooth vibe. He's very dominant. Maybe it's the power that I like his power. He's in the line for the throne. I always like stories of princes. You know, it's not like no Disney tale. I'll tell you that. He's one of my, one of my favorite characters. I think he's hot. One of the very most fictional boys that I will consider my fictional boyfriend. Yeah, I'm adding it to my list. He was a very good character. I'm Team Dorian. I'm saying it now before I go into Cal. Ah, segue. Kale. I liked Kale a lot. And again, I don't know why. But he reminds me of Adam from Shatter Me. I don't know why. He has the same look as Adam. Either I can get over the Shatter Me series 
or this is a weird coincidence, but I liked Kale. He was kind of tough, and secretly I kind of wanted him and Selena to sleep together and stuff. I said, I don't care who she sleeps with, I want to read a sex scene, and I want to read one now, as creepy as that sounds. I like Kale. He was good. He's the captain of the guard, obviously, and he really is devoted to his job, and he really wants to help, and he kind of has this, like, rough patch with Selena, and I'm just like... Oh god, who's she gonna end up with? First she ends up with Dory, and it's like, I like them together, they're very cute. But then like, Kale comes in, nothing really happens, and then she breaks things off with Dorian, which... I was sad, and then she ended up with Kale for a while. I might give me too much of the second book away. I'm not gonna talk too much about Kale and Selena, because I'm on the third book. Okay, I can't remember. This is what happens when you don't film a book talk in, like, five months. Sorry. Again, I apologize for future spoilers. I like Kale, he was okay. He's not my favorite character, he's too professional. I like Dorian, who's more laid back and more- He's the prince, he can do whatever the hell he wants. And I like the way Kale and- this is not a spoiler. Kale and Dorian are friends, but I thought he was gonna treat Dorian like being like, Your Majesty, but he's talking to him like he's like some guy off the street. Like, yes, Roger Weed says like sometimes because of the fact that he is the prince, so he has to watch what's filter because he says sometimes he says I'm sorry. He doesn't call me Majesty because they've known each other so long. They're more like friends than he works for. Because technically Kale is for his father, not him. That's what I got out of it. But I like Kale. Was, well, at least in the first book, he was a little too. I don't know, stiff for me, a little too, hey, I gotta do my job. I liked him morally in the second book because he kind of comes out of his character and his character kind of arcs throughout like the last book and then into the second book. Oops, I'm giving too much away again, but I'm just getting a little preview of my next book talk. I'll be filming that book talk next. But I liked him better in the second book because as much as I love Dory and I just gotta talk about Kale for a little bit, in the second book he's kind of more like laid back and his character kind of arcs and that's the point of a book series, all the characters, you see them arc throughout the series. And I think he's a little bit more laid back because there's something that happens in the second book. I'll point to that in my next review. But this book, he's kind of like, we're trying to get to know him. We're trying to get to know all these characters and kind of get comfortable with them. And I like that. And Kale was okay to me. I am just Team Dorian. I am sorry. Some of you are Team Kale. That's all I'm going to say. There's no controversy around this. I'm Team Dorian. I'm going to say it. I'm not going to apologize. I'm not even going to say sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I am Team Dorian. I'm gonna move on from my love to Dorian. Nas was my favorite character. Now, Shatter Me, I'm gonna go back to here. We had like Kenji, the kind of funny character, and he haven't said Shatter Me. Go check out my review. And I like Knox. He was kind of like the Kenji of the book. He kind of added some humor. I was looking for a character that was funny, lighthearted, and he's like, yo, what's up? You're not gonna make a joke. And we didn't have that character. I'm still looking for that. Maybe a character will show up in the series will that happen. Now, Knox was the closest thing we had to that character. He was good. I liked him a lot. He developed an alliance with Selena, and Selena saved him during that thing. And she was a good thing, but she's like, I'm in 18th place. She was kind of supposed to step back because people weren't supposed to know who she was because she was supposed to keep her identity a secret because they didn't want to intimidate anybody. And uh, truth comes out and crap hits the fan and everybody finds out at the end of the book that she is in fact Selena Cerinthion. I can't pronounce her last name. I liked him a lot. He was a really good ally for Selena and I'm sad that he left at the end and he got pardoned and he got to go home and not even have to worry about going back to wherever he came from, the hell he came from, and he got to go back home to his family or wherever he's from. I'm sad he's gone. I hope we see more of him in the next year. Maybe he'll pop up again in future books. I hope. I hope he doesn't die. But I hope he pops up in other books because Selena could really use him to fight and maybe he'll pop up. Who knows? Nahima is a nice character. I couldn't really pronounce her name. It's really hot. She was interesting. She was like kind of a good ally. Also another ally for Selena because she was like friends with Selena and she was like the closest thing Selena had to a friend that she could talk to and confide in and she helped her. And she How do we know Nahima was magic? I didn't even know. Cause she's like being all like kind of sketchy so like she runs into her in, in the library and then she's like being all like you know, snippy. We're kind of like suspicious of her cause we don't know what's going on. We knew something was going on. And then she, she's part of this ally group. She's part of the rebels that are getting back from where she's from. And we first meet her and she's just a princess and kiss her guards and stuff. At first I thought she didn't like Selena. Cause I'm reading this on the train and book con and I'm kind of confused. And I'm like what the hell is going on here? And apparently she was friends with Catelyn for a while, and then she like ditched Catelyn. 
I ain't friends with you anymore because of something that she said that pissed her off. I liked her a little bit, but she was kind of after Dorian, so every woman is. Come on, it's Dorian. Okay, I'm getting off topic. Nahima was like friends with Catelyn, I think, for a while, and then she shunned her. I thought she was shunning her guard or something, and I was very confused. I didn't really get, get clarification until like way, way into the book. I'm reading it on the train, I'm reading a book, and I'm like, what? Did I'm so confused. And then I'm like, oh, okay. So it took me a while. Nahima was a really good character. I liked her. She was a good ally for Selena, another one. And she wasn't in the contest. She was just a princess. She was representing her land. And then she speaks this language with Selena. I didn't know Selena was like fluent in that language or she was at least trying to. And they could talk in their own language like code. And no one would know about it. Dorian knows a little bit of it, but not much. Kale doesn't know anything about that language. She was a good character to read. Catelyn, she's kind of like an antagonist because she was the reason why she put the poison in Selena's cup. So we don't know much about her in the second book. I kind of have some respect for her because we kind of get more side of her story in the second book. And in the first book, she's kind of evil. She also talks to the queen, which is Dorian's mother. And she's trying to be like, hey, I want to be with your son and stuff like that. So a little respect for her in the second book. I kind of feel bad for her. I don't really like her much, but I hope we get more of her. We really don't see her much in the second book, but when we do, I kind of have some sympathy for her, and we don't really know what happens to her in the second book, but they're not really mentioning much of it in the third book, come to think about it. I'll go more into that in the second book. God, when I start doing the review for the third book, it's going to be like, why did I say that in the Throne of Glass book talk? Anyway, moving on. There's not much I can say about her. She's kind of a secondary character, so we really don't get much of a story. But when she's there, she's kind of being like all evil and snickery and like hee 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 hee. So, Parrington. Parrington is like a secondary character. We don't get much of him, but he's like one of the king's assets, I think. And he. Parrington was. He's an a hole. I never liked him. I'll never come around to liking him because we all know he's bad. But we get more of him in the second book again. And you know, more of these characters show up in the second book. He hasn't really popped up in this third book because. Selena's in a place right now where we don't really see these characters. It's mainly just focused on her and other new characters. Okay, I'm done talking about the third book. You'll hear me make references to the other books because I am very behind and very confused. So, if I give away a spoiler, I apologize in advance. I should have said this in the beginning of the video. Anyway, moving on. Hulin, which is Dorian's brother. He has to be like 12. He's a spoiled brat. That's all we can say. We see him in the second book. There's not much I can say. He bosses people around and he does not really talk much about him. We want to get more of his character. And I think he like bosses like Dorian around a little bit. We don't get much of him in this book. I don't think he pops up into the second book. I think he pops up in the last book. I think. I'm not positive. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. But we don't get much of Hulin in this book either. The king is a giant pain in the ass. I do not like him. He's like a meanie. He outlawed magic. That's all I can say here. And then we got Elena, which was, she was a, the first queen of the land, Adrian, I can't pronounce it, but that's where she's from. And I didn't know that Selena was tied to her descendant. I don't even really know that. And then Gavin was the other prince, and Selena talks to her through these catacombs that was underneath when she was in her room, and she found out about these catacombs, which is when she found out about these catacombs, and then she started talking to Elena. That's when the fantasy aspect started to come in. So for the first part of the book, it's not much fantasy. It's more like kind of like historical fiction, kind of like a regular book, and then the magical elements don't really come in until she starts talking to Elena, and then we kind of get the idea that there are going to be magical elements involved. I had no idea this was a fantasy when I picked this book up. But you know what? It works. I love the series. That's all I'm gonna say. I like how Elena helped Selena at the end of the book. Hey, Selena and Elena! That rhymes! Elena helped Selena at the end of the book and like she helped her fight and she gave her the necklace and how is she related to Selena if she's related to Dorian? That's what I want to know. Selena's the queen of tennis and so I guess she's the heir and the related. I still don't understand that. I'm still trying to figure this out. But she gave her her necklace, and I'm like, why is she in this necklace? Selena's not magic. And it turns out she is part magic. Since there's so many unanswered questions at the end of this series, like, why is Selena wearing the necklace? Why is she going through all this stuff? Because we really don't know much about Selena's background until, like, the next two books. Like, we don't know why she has the necklace. I thought that, like, why is she tied with fantasy elements? And I don't know why Selena gave her the necklace. Apparently it's her birthright. Elena was like her ascendant. She's a descendant from Elena. I don't know. 
Christine explained this in her book talk. That's what I got out of it. I'm still confused about this. Someone needs to give me a family tree, at least this family. Because I don't even know. I'm still confused. Like, we get a map. I want a family tree on the inside of this book because it's like the inside of Clockwork Princess is a family tree of the Herndale family. For future reference, Sarah, if you if you're watching, please talk to your cover artist and put a, if there's not already one, put a family tree. I'm very confused. Well, you probably could look it up on the internet. But anyway, I'm still confused about that. I'm going to go into future research about this, but I'm still starting the series. I'm on the third book. What do I know? But I liked Elena too. Elena was helping Selena at the end of the book and fighting the Garvin or whatever his name is, the guy, Avon, I forgot his name. But she was fighting. She had some allies, she had some enemies. Kane is another one. God, that guy really pisses me off. He was like re Weird Marks, I think it's called Weird Marks. It's me of Shadow Hunters where you use the ruins to kind of access things and make portals and open portals it's kind of like ruins i guess in this series it's like her form of ruins but like she used it to open portals and do all this stuff there's a book about it there's called the walking dead and it's like the their version of the gray book from the moral instruments i saw a lot of comparisons that's kind of reminded me too of the moral instruments because of the weird marks and how you can summon up these creatures and that's why kane was killing all these people and all these people started dying because he gained the strength of the dead people and then this weird creature started attacking and killing and that's how Cain got so strong and how he got to fight Selena and it didn't help that she was poisoned by Catelyn. I think he was working with her right or something. I think he was allied with Perrington. Ugh, Cain, I can't stand him. But no one can. But he's dead so. We knew Kale was in love with Selena that moment because he killed Kane to save her because he didn't admit it but he's like you know what I'm gonna kill Kane because she's like yeah I just killed you because he was afraid to text you now I really have feelings for this what you did another thing the Yule Miss Ball we're gonna get into some events here I liked it because I thought it was a great element I heard that this book was a retelling and started to be Cinderella and I found the reference to Cinderella in this book and she showed up with a dress and she looks so pretty and the stuff in her hair. I said, this is a perfect Cinderella moment. I see, I, that's where the comparison, I, I had heard about it before with the book. There's the perfect element that we were looking for with this is Cinderella element. Probably because of the prince too. That moment during the Yomas Bowl and everybody looks at her and, she, and she's confined to these rooms so she's kind of like disobeying, kind of like how Cinderella disobeys her stepmother. I, you see the comparison a little bit. Everybody looks at her. That's the moment that we loved as kids, the princess element. All us girls, you know you're talking about the princess. That I really liked a lot. And when she showed up with the beautiful dress and Orion couldn't keep his eyes off of her. And Cat made Cat jealous and everybody else jealous. All the girls spited her. The men wanted her. And then she wanted to dance with Cam. She was talking to Dorian. She was dancing with Dorian. And Cam's like, I'm not dancing with you. And she's like, you know what I'm talking about. And then that's kind of where the Dorian and Selena thing kind of happened. And they kissed after the Yulmuth Bowl, I believe. And then they kind of were a couple for a while. And then she let him go. And I was so sad. And then it just gave Kale an opportunity to step in and be like, hey, I'm her man now. <laughs> Selena's happy. In a love triangle, I have to say, as so much as I love certain characters, as long as the character's happy with so and so, I'm happy. I just think that Dorian and, and Selena should get together because. He's the king. They could take over power and rain down on the people and bring magic back to Rithfold. Bring it back to the kingdom. And hopefully the king dies because I don't like him. You know? I want to see Dorian become king. I want to see him have more power than he has now. That's my desire. I can't really talk about my, what I'm expecting in the next book because I read it already. So we'll see when that part happens. But the Yulmas book was really good and I like that. Yulmas is like their own holiday. I guess it's like Christmas, but it's Sarah J. Bass's take on Christmas. I like the made-up holiday. I think it's very original in a book, and I liked it. It's a lot like Christmas. You get gifts. You'll miss Christmas. It rhymes. So I guess you get presents and the candy. He got really fun. I, I love that puppy. Very, very cute dog, and I like the element. It made Selena kind of look more friendly and less of an assassin and gave her a little bit of a soft side and we get a little bit of a side of her that I liked and I like that Dorian gave, gave the puppy to her and that was a good element. It was a small element but I like it. Fleetfoot is my favorite character. I said it.
And I like the pool element of playing pool with the pool table. Selena played the piano, which we get other sides of her. You kind of a, like Dorian asked her why she's playing the piano. It's kind of a soft subject for her because she doesn't want to talk about it because I guess it's her connection with Sam. It's like Sam and the piano, I guess. Too touchy subject for her that we don't get. But I liked how she played the piano. And then she was playing pool with, with Dorian and showed that they had this cute little banter going. And it was cute and I like that. And she likes to read. And then Dorian likes to read and he gives her these books. And she goes to the library and I love a character that reads. It shows that they're a part of us. And most characters read, I guess. Most, um, you don't have to be a character to read. And my protagonist, she don't read. Did I give too much away there? Depends on your character. Which one to read? Personally, I like Selena because she reads. She's kind of like Belle meets the Cinderella, like a really badass princess. Is that it? Oh wait, she kind of is a princess. But and I like that a character can read because you can relate to them. And I don't know, that's just me. I, I think Juliet likes to read too, right? I forgot. Why am I talking about that book series? <laughs> Selena gets his mark on her head towards the end of the book and we don't know why it's there. Again, I thought that she was immortal and then like Nahima was this like, all magical being but it, she's not she put it there I, the king's kind of suspicious of it and we don't know what it is does it give her magical abilities i don't know it just pops up after the war and nahima helps her and then she ends up fainting and i got confused i had to reread that scene nahima faints for like two seconds and then selena i think tries to help her but then she ends up almost getting killed and then we don't get much about Nahima it was just like a two second thing because I thought Selena had fainted and I reread it wrong and I got confused in that scene my favorite part in this book would probably be the romance you're gonna get romance in whatever book fantasy contemporary you get them mainly contemporary because they're mainly about love high fantasy urban fantasy regular fantasy what have you science fiction thrillers you're you're always gonna have romance in no matter what book you have and I liked the romance. I think that was one of my favorite parts of Love Triangle. It was good, but it wasn't like my favorite Love Triangle. I'd say that this does not compare to Shadow Me's Love Triangle. I kind of like Shadow Me's Love Triangle a lot, but, but I'm not gonna judge it because I'm only on the third book. She's not really in love right now. She's kind of on her own in the third book, but the Love Triangle is okay to me. I didn't love it and I didn't hate it. I'm still like kind of warming up to it in a way and I'm still getting used to it. I like the love. I like the romance. I like the romance. I'm waiting for more romance. I think that there should be more romance than there had been. There was a very good scene in the second book where things happened and I really enjoyed it even though it wasn't with the person I wanted her with. But it's okay because as long as we got some romance, I don't care. That's how I feel. As long as I got some romance, I don't care who she's with. As long as there's some romance in it. I need romance. I like the fight scenes. I like the Yulmas ball. I like the way she dressed up and the way she wore all these pretty dresses. And she, she felt like a princess. And she got, really got to see her break out of her shell and see a side of her that we haven't seen other than the tough girl that she is. And this tough protagonist that she is. I really like that. And I like the fact that she's a tough cookie. And we have to see her as a princess. And you see her come out of her shot. I like the clothes that she wore. The beautiful dresses and everything. When she wasn't geared up for this contest and fighting. And we got to see her be a normal girl. Be a princess and live out her whatever fantasy she wanted to live. Because she loved dressing up. You noticed that. I liked her witty remarks also. She, she always liked to threaten people and threatened to beat them up and I, I see a lot of that in the second book and I was like laughing because they were funny and there were funny moments in this book too the play hearted moments and the tough moments and I liked hearing more about her parents we don't know much about her parents I don't know what is going on with them we don't get much information about her parents but I hope to get more in the future when we get more information about her and I think we're getting more throughout the series obviously we are because we're going to see her arc Stuff's gonna happen. I'd like to see more about her parents. I hope we get that in the rest of the series. And we probably will, like I said before. I liked those moments where she was playing the piano and she was spending her time with Dorian. Those are gonna be my top favorite parts, her spending time with Dorian. I'm not apologizing. I like the parts with Dorian, hands down. I liked his perspective too, seeing things from his POV and hearing from his side of the story and seeing how he really is. He may be this like player, whatever you call him. But he does have a heart and he does care and he really does care for Selena and he wants to be with her and he's not going to stop. He's going to probably change his ways to be with her and I hope he does and I want them to be together. I think that they are going to be together at the end. They, my friends, are endgame. Okay? Dorian is endgame. That's all I'm going to say because 
he cares for her, and I think Kale is right for her. I think that Dorian is probably going to change for her and want to be with her because he seems like he's not going to give up. And it's not like he's fighting Kale. It's not like in Shatter Me where it's like, or any other book for that matter, where like the two guys are fighting over the girl. They're kind of being civil about it, and they're like, let's just see who she chooses, which I respect. And they're not really fighting over my book. The two guys kind of fight over my protagonist. I just like it that way. It depends on the author and how you write and how you look at the situation. But I think that they're kind of being civil and they're like, you know what, whoever she chooses, she chooses. We'll see what the other reaction, whoever she ends up with at the end of these books. But whoever she ends up with, let's see how the other person reacts to it. So that's basically what I got out of it. But I'm getting off topic, but that's probably one of my favorite parts of fantasy elements and also the, the fighting. I always love action scenes in these books and the parts with Dorian and getting his perspective. That's all I can say on this. So my theories for the second book, I can't talk about my theories for the second book because I already read it. But I will give you my theories for the rest of the series because, I, like I said, I've read Crown of Midnight already and I really don't want to give too much away. So all I'm going to say is my theories for the rest of the series. I hope we see more Selena. I hope she ends up with Dorian. I'm just trying to give a theory without spoiling. I hope I see more of Dorian and Selena. I want to see Dorian kind of become this warrior and kind of fight and figure out who he is. God, this is hard. I can't do it without spoilers because like I said, I'm on the third book. I can't really say much. Because I'm going to be reviewing the, the second book and I'm going to be in the same position I'm in now trying not to spoil the third book. I want to see more of Selena and Dorian throughout the series. I want to see Selena find out who she is and find out her background. I want to see more about her parents. I want to see more of this King of Assassins, that a-hole that he is. And just basically that's it. I really want to see more of the series. I want to see Selena arc. I want to see all these characters arc throughout the series. I want to see more characters. I want to see a funny character here. I'm expecting a Kenji-like character where he's like making jokes because it gives you a little heart and heart. Now Selena's kind of like that, but I need another character like that. I need another funny character. And I'm looking forward to seeing more characters too because I'm seeing more characters in the third book that I'm liking someone not liking and you'll know when I do my air of fire book talk but I just hope that I see more of that again I can't do crown of midnight because I read it already so I can't give you any previews of that I'm fine my book talks I will catch up over the next like few weeks so don't worry about it my air of fire book talk won't be coming for a while because I'm gonna be taking a brief hiatus but I'll get to that at the end of the video and I mentioned it at the end of my vlog God, that went up too late. And that's my theories for the rest of the series, rest of the books. And I just hope that I get more Selena in. That's all I can really say. That is my video. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys liked my little review of Throne of Glass. I love this series and I couldn't get enough of it. I apologize for giving away brief spoilers of Crown of Midnight. I might cut them out if I can because I don't want to give too much away. I just got too confused. I'm really behind on book talks and I will explain why. This is story time. When I was on vacation, I uploaded one vlog up in New York City. Go watch that. I uploaded Arizona week one and that was fine. Now when I got home, I had a long story short, I had computer issues. It crashed. So everything got deleted off my computer. I had to re-upload and I lost three days of editing because I I had to take it to get repaired and it took three days to bring it back. I got everything deleted. I have to catch up on editing. And then I had another issue with a computer. Apparently an account that I was using to edit was in a temporary account and I had to get it fixed and I lost another day of editing. So that's why I was late with the vlog. And I wanted to up get to the Throne of Glass book talk as soon as I could. But at the time when I filmed that little update at the end of the vlog, I had no idea this was going to happen. Because computers are unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen to them. They're very shaky computers. You know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I've had issues with my computer. So that's why this is a little late. So oh, a little late. This book came out like years ago, a couple years ago. But that's why I am kind of confused when I'm talking about the books and stuff. But I promise my computer's okay now. Hopefully, here's the hoping that it stays the way it is. I'm trying to hope to get a new computer for Christmas, but. Here's to hoping my current computer is okay and there are no more problems that I will be uploading videos regularly. And I've said this before, if you guys didn't get it the second time, I'm going on a brief hiatus. I said Thanksgiving in my previous vlog, but again, Pierce Aaron didn't know if she was going to have computer issues. But I'm thinking 
maybe after Thanksgiving. I'm not positive. It depends on editing. I'm going to try to get this book talk edited in a week. We'll see what happens. I don't know if future is going to do editing. So I want to say I'm going to try my best to get it out in a week. I got Lady Ben out in a week. So I'm pretty good with editing book talks due to school and... I'm working on my book. I'm trying to work on my final draft, I hope. I have school work and I'm also working as well. Don't know when my hiatus is going to happen. I cannot say when it's going to happen. I will know at the end of my Tales from Town Academy book talk. I'm going to do or book talk or something surrounded that. I will tell you guys at the end of that. I, it's not like I'm not going to like say nothing and then warn you. I, I will let you guys know beforehand when the hiatus will happen. I'm coming to you from my phone because my battery and my camera died, but I just want to continue saying that I'm going to give you a little warning before the hiatus just so I give you guys a little leeway just in case if new subscribers are interested in subscribing. And, then, and again, with my computer issues, that's why under my end screen there's no recent videos because everything got wiped out. More of the story, guys. Save stuff on a flash drive and back things up. Thank God my manuscript was backed up that no against YouTube and BookTube here. Don't get insulted here. I'm glad that I saved my manuscript. That means more to me. Again, I'm being honest here. But I just want to let you guys know that there will be a hiatus coming. I'm thinking by December, right before Christmas. I know that. This is my new thing. I think I'm going to take hiatuses from now on and focus on school and my manuscript, getting an agent. That's basically my issues right now. I had said in my previous video that I might be doing a writing video. I don't know yet. It depends on timing. I don't want to give you a definite, but maybe we'll see. I can't say definite. It's not written in stone, but we'll find out. I don't know how future Aaron's going to edit this. That's basically all I really want to say. Uh, there'll be an update about a hiatus soon. I'm going to be doing my Crown of Midnight book talk. That's going to be coming, I hope, Hopefully, by the beginning of next month, I want to start filming a next video by Halloween. I also am going to be filming a, a Tales from Town Academy, I like book talk or some things related to that. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I might be a little review of each section. I will plan that as I go and I'll give you more updates on that via Snapchat. I give you guys updates via when I'm planning videos via Snapchat. So if you want ideas of, I've said this before, when I'm planning videos or whatever's going on. And from when I'm planning videos mainly, go on to Snapchat because that will give you the idea of when I'm filming videos and updates. I don't really put much on social media. I'll probably just do something on Twitter. I don't know yet, but usually sometimes I tweet about videos, mostly I tweet about writing. Okay, that's not the point. I'm talking about my social media here. I can't say much about repeating. I do explain this in my Arizona Week 2 vlog, so you can just check that out for more details. I said I didn't really want to go too much into it in, in this video, so that's what basically I'm keeping it short and sweet, at least hoping to. My book talk is probably very long. I apologize in advance and also I apologize that my other vlog I said it was gonna be short but it wasn't a little announcement if you are not following I am at real writing on Instagram and Twitter and I am at divergent fan 93 on snapchat so follow like subscribe and I'll see you guys soon goodbye